Stay tuned for the planet Earth's most relevant newscast. Broadcasting from Sector 17G of the Milky Way Galaxy, we present you a program that is a strange combination of newsworthy and non-newsworthy. Funny at times and extremely non-funny at others. Ladies and gentlemen, Earthlings and Lunars, we present to you Down Out Live. Welcome to episode 43 of Veilmount vale Live. I'm your host, Anne-Marie Scott. And I'm Jody Newham. BCTV's producer and editor, Rosalind Barr, is no longer with us. Oh my. We wish her a peaceful transition to the other side. Dear Lord, I didn't even hear about this. Hello, I'm Rosalind Barr, and welcome to Veilmount vale Live. I decided to ignore him, you know, as usual. Rosalind Barr, your certified blonde correspondent. Yeah. Hello, and welcome to the Blonde Diaries. What was it that made you realize that art was important to you? I don't know. These are very difficult questions, you know. <laughs> In January, a blonde took her scarf back to the store because it was too tight. Hello. Hi. It's about a $70 million build-out. In March, a blonde got very excited because she finished her jigsaw puzzle in six months. The box said two to four years. That was successful? Yes, it, I, I think it definitely was. And, and so it was decided. I'm going to McBride. Why McBride? Is it right that being a doctor and being in the military, you can both destroy and save lives? I don't think I'd be killing anyone if I was a doctor in the military. You should really see somebody about that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rosalind. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. What happened to her? Her summer posting was finished and she's returned to university. Oh. First up, VCTV is hiring a temporary casual employee to help our station manager out in the coming weeks. It's a sweet job with high pay and mega benefits. No, it's not. The correct applicant will have experience with computers, knowledge of PowerPoint, and some familiarity with video and the ability to work unsupervised. If you work for Big Take Cable, this broadcast is for sale. For a low, low price, you can purchase this program for your community channel. Keep your viewers abreast of information they couldn't possibly be interested in. It's ideal community television content the way it was meant to be. More on that later. Fail mount. You're looking good these days. No doubt it's one of three things. You've either joined Dr. DeToy's diet cult, You've been reveling at Veilmount's Arts Festival. Or you've been beaten to oblivion and rebuilt from the ground up at Veilmount's Mixed Martial Arts Club. We've got all that and much more. But first, let's check in with Veilmount's leanest and meanest fighting machine, Jose Cornejo! Hello, my name is Jose Cornejo. I am the manager at the Romana here in Veilmount. I am a husband, I am a new father, and also I am a professional fighter. So this October 2nd, I have a, an upcoming fight, my, my next fight will be on uh, Trail BC, and, uh, and it's, I've been waiting for this moment because it's my first fight here in Canada after one year and a half uh, with no fights at all. Uh, I'm really excited. I've been training for for a really long, long time to be, to to make this moment uh, real. And uh, I'm fighting Del Menlik. is a is a Muay Thai Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy. I, I know he got four uh, fights in overall. And uh, I, I for sure I can I can. Uh, I can put on a, a really good fight and entertaining fight for everybody. The main challenges of my preparation uh, for this year and a half have been uh, have been a difficult year because I had to train 
alone for a while because uh, since I moved to Canada I came into Belmont there's no training partners at the beginning here so I gotta train by myself that's the main challenge well the, the cutting weight part of, of the fight has been uh, more challenging than other fights because uh, obviously it's 20 pounds instead of 10 only I'll always walk around 195 on my feet only without uh, any preparation for the fight but for this fight I gotta do uh, cardio at least five times a week I gotta do my Muay Thai technique which is uh, five rounds of five minutes five times a week and I gotta do strength conditioning along with it but without building the muscle on it because that muscle give you more weight right so what I am right now is probably 187 right now this is what it looks like it's still some fat here you can you can see right um, I mean I try to be always in shape not not too fat not too heavy and uh, the, the good thing is this fight means a lot to me because it's my first fight in Canada so I'm taking this this little more uh, further so I can stay on 185 every single time and I don't have to cut any more weight Belmont MMA is uh, uh, an excellent club here in, in, in for, for this part of, uh, of uh, the province uh, it um, amazes me that in, in a little a small town like this we, we got this club because uh, I was used to to work in the big cities, and 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 I never never saw something like this going on a, on a small a small town like this. And uh, they are hardworking guys, the most of them. Uh, there's always always uh, joy in the training. There's always laugh in the training. <laughs> they are disciplined people as well. Hi, I'm Eric Migland. I uh, started up uh, Vale Mount Mixed Martial Arts Club last year. Um, Joe as a fighter is, um, uh, he's a professional fighter all the way, uh, he, he definitely emanates the uh, attitude and uh, moxie that it takes to be a professional fighter. Um, a lot of his attributes definitely when it comes to fighting are on the ground, uh, he's very calm, he doesn't panic, doesn't freak out, he uh, controls his breathing well. Um, and then when it comes to the stand-up, I mean his, his Muay Thai is, is very good, uh, he's a very flexible guy, he moves quick. Um, he knows his stuff, um, he's not afraid to fight, and uh, yeah, as far as this fight coming up with, um, with Del Melnick, um, I definitely expect to see a win from Joe, absolutely. More control this time, Joe, than, than power, okay. You ready? Ready. Oh. Good stuff, good stuff. Oh. Nice, good job. Keep it going. I would like to thank all, all my sponsors for this fight, Belmont MMA Club, Monashi Motors, I would like to thank Travis Automotive, the Bali Sentinel. Wait for me to come back with that victory, because in that co-main event, he will know who is the Mexican pro fighter, okay? Um, the other thing is, don't be afraid, okay? It won't take so long, no problem. Melnick is going down! What have you got against Dell? Nothing personal, but on October 2nd, he's going to regret getting out of bed! I hope nobody gets hurt. I wouldn't call him a nobody, but I hope he gets hurt too! Yeah! And Louie. We move our attention now to a presentation made by Dr. Jay Wortman of Health Canada at the Best Western on Tuesday night. I heard it was really well attended. There were a ton of people there. Anne-Marie? What? It was a big crowd. Anne-Marie? Many people attended. That's better. It was a huge success. <clears throat> <clears throat> Dr. Jay Wortman has been advocating a low-carb diet similar to the Atkins diet. It has much in common with the work of local doctor Stéphane Dutoy. In episode 32, we profiled Dr. Dutoy's Eat for Life program and spoke with a participant who had great success. Those who do well in the program experience significant weight loss and some linked health benefits. Now, I didn't attend the meeting, but I'm sure I know the secret that Dr. J. Workman was sharing with the people of Valemount. I bet you don't. It's simple. Just exercise more and eat less. Nope. 
that has to be it. Wardman has a funny theory about that. People become overweight because they don't exercise enough and they eat too much. Nope. He believes that eating poorly causes people to eat too much and exercise too little. Same diff. No. His theory is that avoiding carbohydrates and eating more fatty foods will increase the amount you exercise, the amount of energy you have, and lower your desire for food. So the answer is simple. Eat less and exercise more. No. Whatever. Let's roll the clip. The big issue here is these blue bars, the omega-6. You need to be careful which oils you eat. You want to avoid the ones that are very high in omega-6. So olive oil is good. One of the reasons I was so eager to come up here when I met last time is that here's an example, a real-life example, of you know, a pretty small community, significant number of people having had a tremendous benefit from a simple diet intervention. We're going to go through an ethics approval at the health authority. We're going to access the data. We'll anonymize it. Your names won't be attached. We'll analyze it. And we'll make a report. We'll publish it. And we'll say, look, this is what can be done. And we'll do an economics analysis. And we'll go to the health authority and say, look how much money you can save. We know from the physiological evidence now that this works brilliantly for people with these metabolic problems. Compliance can be an issue, and it's something we need to work on, something we need to address. We can, I've been in, I was at a Canadian Diabetes Association conference in Montreal two years ago, and I'm a thorn in their side. Like, they'll do a big presentation on how wonderful drugs are, and I'll get up and go, did you know that if you just stop eating carbohydrates, you don't need to take any of those drugs? And, and this big world-class uh, expert on, uh, on statin drugs said, Oh yeah, that works, but nobody can stay on the diet. I'm not going to prescribe a diet nobody can stay on. And there was applause in the audience. Everybody applauded. And I, and I felt like a complete doofus, you know, like, I'm going to slump away. And uh, there's this attitude that, yeah, okay, maybe it works, but nobody can do it. So let's forget about it. And I think that's a complete wrong attitude. You know, we don't apply that with smoking. Why would we apply it here? It was amazing to have you here, and we look forward to seeing you here again. And thanks for your support. And we are definitely going to use some of the data that we got from you and some of the help that we got from you and institute it in our program. And we will let you know what the results were. He wants us to eat fat. Less carbs, more fat. Won't that make me fat? No. It sounds like a cult. That came up during the presentation. It did? Dr. Dutoy has tried to keep the diet from spreading beyond his patient groups because of medical complications that can arise. Wow. Kim McNaughton of Dunster brought up the point to Dutoy. It's felt a little bit cultish to the people who aren't on the program, <laughs> and uh, I just want to share that. I think it's valuable for you to know that. So if we can get the funding and we can get the staff to help us, we can definitely get more, more groups going. But we eventually want this to be a community-driven thing with community leaders, people out of the successful groups. To continue with this, eventually we have to fix our children's children's problem. Right. So the medical staff is volunteering their time? Yeah. That's huge. Careful. 